Hey guys, what's up? I have a very special treat for you today because I'm going to be telling you a story that I did tell on my TikTok, but it wasn't like the full story because I have like very limited time on TikTok. And people hate when I do it in multiple parts. So I'm going to tell you the full story. So I don't know if any of you remember this from my TikTok, but it was one of my more popular videos. It has like 6 million like views right now, where my dad almost shot me when I was 16. So today I'm gonna tell you like the entire story with like more detail because there's some things that I guess I left out and I didn't really realize it. And the reason I decided to tell you guys this again was because um, kind of a backstory, I got a DM from from a producer from NBC and they are coming out with this new show called True Story. And one of the producers came across my TikTok and was like, whoa, she tells stories and stuff. And he personally DM'd me and was like, I would really like if you auditioned or signed up for our show. And the show is basically people who have really crazy stories that are almost unbelievable. And you sit there, well, you go to LA and you sit there and you get like interviewed or you talk to, um. Ed Helms. Ed Helms was Andy from The Office. He is very popular. He was in The Hangover. I love him very much. And so I almost didn't apply because I was like, uh, I don't really know if I'd be good for it. But then one night I was up really late and I was kind of bored. So I decided to type out my entire story. And so I sent it in and the next morning, the producer calls me and he's like, hey Maddie, like what's up? Like I really liked your story. I read the whole thing. I want you to like embellish it a little bit more. And like, I, I really like your story. We would really like to have you. And so then um, I talked to my friends to get their point of view from what happened that night. And so then the next day, a different producer, it was a lady this time, called me and I told her the whole story over the phone. It took me quite a while to tell her. And at the very end of it, she was like, oh, after hearing it, like after reading it, we really liked it because um, like the way that I guess I, I, I guess I typed it out. But then when I told her, I put in more detail of what happened. And she said, I really like your story, but I don't know if they'll actually take the story because there's underage drinking in it. And she thought it was gonna be okay at first because I wasn't the one drinking, but um, it, I guess, didn't work out because um, I like she told me that she would call me if I got it and she like didn't call me which is fine because you know it was really cool to um, get that experience in the first place um it's all fine though because like I got the experience of talking to like it, two producers from NBC but basically if I got it I would have gone to LA and they would have like flown me out there or something and I would have I would have sat on stage with Ed Helms and um, I would have been telling him my story as like actors like um, Randall Park he was gonna be on a Randall Park was also in one episode of The Office. He's a very like popular um, Asian actor and he was Kim Jong-un in The Interview and I love that movie so much. Um, but yes, yeah, so they, I would have been on stage and they would have been acting out my story and made it like really funny, but I guess it was too like inappropriate or like illegal for it to be on NBC, so. Um, yeah, I'm kind of sad that I didn't like get that opportunity, but it was really cool to get the opportunity of um, talking to these guys. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you the more detailed story of how my dad almost shot me when I was 16 years old. It was an accident. Um, he didn't mean to. He thought I was an intruder, but I'm going to tell you the story. So it all started the last summer night before my junior year of high school started. So this was the night of the Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor boxing match. And so we all went over to my friend's house to watch the match, to basically bet on the match and sit there and watch it, but I don't think any money was involved. So he told his dad that he was gonna have like a few guy friends over and nothing much, but there were like 15 people there and I was there and I'm not a guy. So we're all at his house and we're watching the fight. It's just, it's a lot of fun and we're just like eating food or whatever. So the fight ended around like 12 a.m. and then people started to leave, but I had already made plans to sleep over there along with a few other girls and a few other guys. So once everybody left, there were just like a few people left and and we decided to start like, I, I guess, drinking. I didn't drink, I'm just gonna make that very clear here. I did not have a sip of alcohol that entire night, but my friends wanted to, and they had like, they had access to some beer or something, but it wasn't a lot. And they wanted to get like tipsy or like wasted or something because it was like our last night of summer. So the next day it was like a school night. And so they started running out of alcohol and they still wanted to drink and then they were like, where are we gonna get some more? And I don't know why, I don't know why I opened my mouth, but I was like, 
I have some in my closet at home. And if you're wondering why I have some alcohol in my closet when I was 16 and I didn't drink was because somebody like gave it to me or something. I don't know why I had it honestly, but it was in my closet and I actually had quite a bit. And so I was like, uh, I have some. And they were like, oh my God, okay, like good. Like, where is it? Let's go get it. And I was like, it's in my house. Um, I don't really want to go back there. And so it took them an hour. We, I, I looked at the clock. It was an hour of them trying to convince me to drive back to my house and get it. Um, so the thing was, I was too afraid to go back to my house because my dad was sleeping. And if I woke up my dad, he would have been like, he gets this like attitude when I wake him up. Like, you know, like you don't like being woken up from a nap or from your sleep. So you wake up very cranky. And my dad does that quite often. So I was too afraid to like wake up my dad. And I eventually was like, um, okay, fine. Like we can, we can drive to my house. So, um, I wasn't very happy with having to drive back. I was very comfortable in uh, my friend's house. Um, but the host of the house, okay, let's, let's call him Matthew. Um, so Matthew was like, you know what? I'll go with you. And I'm like, this is your house. You, you, you want to leave your house? And he's like, yeah, this will be so fun. So Matthew and then two other of my friends came. It was um, Matthew, um, another guy. We're going to, he's kind of important. We're going to name him, um, we're going to name him Bob. And then Bob's girlfriend. So we all get in the car and there was four of us total and I was driving. And so it takes about 10 minutes to get from Matthew's house to my house. And so I'm driving so slow because I'm like, if I get pulled over, I, I'm going to get, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble because I'm not supposed to be out at a certain time because I was 16 and I hadn't turned 18 yet. And once you're 18, um, you can have as many people in the car as you want and stay out as late as you want. But I had a curfew, so I wasn't supposed to be out. So I'm driving so slow to my house. And then finally we pull up to the cul-de-sac and then I turn off my lights as I, I as I turn in the street. I turn off my headlights. I, I everything is off. I'm so scared for that. For some reason, me being across the street was going to wake up my dad. My my dad's room is on the very opposite side of the house. And so I pull up and I pull up in front of my, um, my neighbor's house. So I'm across the street. I get out of my car and my friend, um, Bob, he comes with me. And so I'm like, okay, it's up in my room. Like we have to sneak in. I don't want to go through the garage and wake him up. Cause I'm afraid that he's going to question me and like look through my stuff. So I walk around the back of my house and um there's this window that is always open i will actually show you like the window and where this all happened at the end of the video but anyway so i was like we have to sneak into my downstairs window because there is this one window in my house that is always open and it doesn't have a screen because i think i like accidentally knocked out the screen when i was like really little but it doesn't have a screen and it's always unlocked so it's kind of high up so i kind of have to like push myself um up against like my brick wall but my friend came with me to hoist me up into the window and so i'm opening the window and I'm like going so slow because the thing about the window is that it's so squeaky. It makes the loudest noise. And like, if you move it too slow, it's like really loud. If you move it too fast, it will wake up everybody in the house. So you gotta get it like just right. And I didn't do it just right. So we'll get to that. And so like I'm opening the window and it, it's, it's been about 10 minutes and I've gotten the window open like this much because I'm trying not to wake him up. And it's so loud. I, I, don't, I don't even know how my dad didn't wake up earlier or before this, but the window's halfway open and I have like, I'm, I'm a pretty small person. So I like my friend pushes me up through the window and I swing my leg into like swing my leg over the sill and get into the living room and like half my body is hanging out of the window and half my body is like inside the house and so i'm i'm about to like stand up and get in the house when i hear my dad's door swing open and his voice go who's there with a ch -ch of like a shotgun noise and i was like I was like, crap, my friend heard it too. And like, we were on the same page. He drags me, he pulls me down and like, he scrapes my skin against the brick wall actually, cause my house is brick. And um, so, but he was just trying to get there out of there as fast as possible and I was too. And I was so scary because I was like, my dad, he's about to shoot me. He doesn't, he can't see in the dark. He's about to shoot somebody. And I like, I pissed myself. I was, I peed. And so uh, we were running around the house. So we were running, we had to get back to my car. So we had to run around my house. So my neighbors are like really, really close to our house. Like our houses are very close to each other and they don't pick up after their dog. So I stepped in dog poop and we were running. But the thing is my friend, Bob, he's a like national track runner champion type of ordeal. And so he was like, he was booking it. He was so freaking fast. And I was, I was struggling behind. I thought, you know, I thought I was doing pretty well. And then he was like, 
30 feet in front of me so i was like okay i guess i'm pretty slow but you know i was still trying to book it out of there because i was like i don't want to get shot by my own dad that that would be like a whole cps situation and i just didn't want to get I just, I'd rather not get shot. So we're running to my car. Um, my friend is missing from the car, my friend Matthew. And so I look over and then he turns around because he's, he's at my neighbor's house peeing on their front lawn because he really needed to go. And I was like, I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm taking a piss. And so um, the thing was, was um, he was peeing on the lawn of my, um, my neighbor who is an FBI agent. And he's like, kind of weird in the sense that like, I think he has cameras everywhere. So in his point of view, he told me that he turned around and he saw us just booking it to the car. And um, he sees my friend, um, Bob, he's like, he compared us to SpongeBob and Squidward. So he said that um, I was really short, like SpongeBob. And then uh, my friend Bob was really tall, like um, Squidward. And that I was going really slow, which hurt my feelings. Cause I was like, I thought I was doing really well, but I guess not. So we hop in the car and I'm like, we gotta go, we gotta go. Like, uh, we, gotta, we gotta get out of here. And then he's like, what's, what's wrong? I'm like, my dad almost shot me. He thinks like there's an intruder in the house. And then I realized that while I was sitting there, I was like, I start up the car and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I didn't close the window. I didn't have time. I didn't close the window. And also I didn't think it was a good idea to close the window at the time because my dad was literally standing at the top of the stairs. And if he heard the window shut, then he would be like, someone's in the house. So um, I'm sitting there in the car and I'm like, crap, you know what, like, guys, I have to go back inside. And they're like, what, are you crazy? Your dad has like a gun out. And then I'm like, I have to go back in. He's going to think that there is somebody in the house or that there is somebody in the house. He's gonna see that the window's open. So my plan is in my head, you know, if I make a lot of noise going inside, he could, he might think that I just came home and that it was me making the noise the whole time and not an intruder, even though, you know, it was me, but he wouldn't know that I was trying to sneak into the house. Because if he knew that I was trying to sneak into the house, then he would have been like, why are you trying to sneak into the house? And I don't want to be like, to get my friend's alcohol. Anyway, so I walk through the garage and I'm like making all this noise. I'm like, and I'm like, the lights are on. Like, I'm like, um, dad, hello, dad, what's up? He's like, oh my God, Maddie, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, and he's like, Oh my God, I almost shot you. And I'm like, and he's like standing there with his gun and I'm like, you put that down. And so he's like, why are you home? And I was like, oh, I just, I forgot my medication. And then he was like, all right, all right. And he's like really tired um, holding a gun. So that's not like the best combination. But anyway, so I like run upstairs and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So like, I'm just getting my medication. And he's like, okay, okay. And he's like really, really confused. So I run into my room and I get two bags. One bag is like a decoy bag. The other bag is to put all the alcohol in. So I put all like the alcohol in one bag and then I bring the first bag down. It's a decoy bag. So he's standing out in the hallway waiting for me. And so I bring out the bag just in case he's gonna check my bag. He didn't. Uh, I take the bag and I walk downstairs and I pretend like I'm about to leave. And he's like, okay, good night. So his lights, like he turns off his light and then I'm like, Okay, so he's asleep. So I run back upstairs and then I get the um, I get the bag with all of like the alcohol in it because like I'm like I'm like he's not he's not gonna check it. He's asleep. So I run I run downstairs and I'm like crap I have to shut the window. And so I look upstairs and I'm like his lights off. And you know what? I at this point I don't care. He's gonna think that it's me doing whatever. So I shut the window. I, I don't even take my time. I just slam it shut. He doesn't come out of his room and so I leave. I turn off the lights, I shut the garage door, I get in my car and like, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, guys, like he didn't check my bag or anything. Finally, I've calmed down. So I'm like, okay to drive. And then, and then we call everybody back at Matthew's house to tell them what just happened and how my dad actually almost shot me. Cause he was like waving gun in my face. And so my friends called, called them up and they're like, Hey, um, so this is what happened. And like Maddie's dad almost shot her and they're like freaking out. And everybody at the house is like, yeah, 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 sure. And then we get back at the house and we actually explain what happened. And then they were like, they were also like, Oh my God, like, how are you alive? And like, you know, that's kind of dramatic because like, clearly, I mean, like I'm alive. Like, my dad almost shot me, like he actually had a gun, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so as we're driving back, we call them and then we finally get back to Matthew's house. He kicks his door open. So like his parents aren't home, so he can like do whatever he wants. So he takes his foot and like kicks the door open. Like, cause he was like, we're all on this adrenaline high because I like, like a, what just happened. And so he walks in like, like John Cena, he walks in like, like this, like he's like, you know, you know what I mean? Like he's like victory, even though I'm the one who actually had to do everything. And so he walks and he's like, yeah, like we, we got it. Like, yeah, let's party. So we like, we take everything out and everyone starts like drinking and they all give me some money. 
And I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna say no to five bucks from every everybody. So give me give me some money, um, because it's technically mine. And so they gave me the money, and everybody starts drinking, and I'm like sitting there like. I'm gonna watch out for all of you. So one of my friends actually had never drank before. We're gonna call him Steve. So Steve had never had like a drop of alcohol before and he hadn't eaten anything that whole day. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but you like should really have something in your stomach before you drink because like it's like taking like medication on an empty stomach. It's like taking Advil on an empty stomach kind of. Um, it's just not good for you. You should have like a foundation of food in your stomach. So. I pull out like a loaf of bread and I give him four pieces of bread. I don't know why I gave him four pieces of just plain bread, but he ate it. He just ate the bread. And then so he starts drinking and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna get drunk the first time. So for the first time. And and so he's like, I, I wanna get drunk for the first time. So, you know, I gave him this bread and then he starts drinking and then he's like, he's like a bigger like built dude. So he it didn't hit him as fast. And so he starts drinking and then 30 minutes later, he's um, shirtless on the floor. Um, and so then he starts like confessing his undying love for me. And I was very confused because we had always just been like just friends. But then he's like, Maddie, like I've always had these feelings for you. Like it's just, I can't, like I just, I need to get it off my chest. And I was, I was just, I was like, what is going on? Because then he pulls out his phone and he's video taping himself. He's recording himself saying every wrong thing he's ever done in life. And I'm like, this is not usually what happens when a person gets drunk for the first time. Actually, you know what? I can't really speak for everybody, but um, yeah, so he's like, he's like upset and he's like crying, but not crying. I and mean, he's like, he's like man crying. He's, he's man crying. Um, and so eventually like fast forward after he's been hitting on me for the whole night, everybody starts to go to bed and we all choose our own rooms and I chose like his little sister's bedroom to sleep in. It was very nice and clean and I got my own room. So I lay down in the bed and he keeps trying to come into the room and like sleep, like sleep next to me or like just like talk to me. And I was just like, this is getting really annoying. And so like my friend Matthew was kind of like acting like a dad, like um, let, let's leave her alone and stuff. And he, start, he kept like pushing him away, like dude, stop. And then so eventually he was kind of guarding my room, like my friend Matthew. And then um, my friend Steve, like the drunk one, he finally got past him after the fifth time. He um, snuck past him and he's like crawling on the, he's army crawling on the floor trying to get to my room. And then my friend Matthew turns around and he sees it and he starts booking it after him. But then at this point, Steve didn't really make it. He's passed out on the floor outside of the door. Um, but the door is open and I'm pretending to be asleep. So I'm watching this entire thing happen. And so um, <laughs> Matthew like drags him. He's dragging him to the end of the stairs because he wants him to sleep downstairs on like the couch. And he's dragging him to the end of the stairs, but he's like a way bigger dude. So like Steve, the, the drunk one is like way bigger than my friend Matthew. So um, he like had to take a break at the top of the stairs and then Steve wakes up and he starts rolling down the stairs and he's like hitting his head on every step. And then, he, and then Matthew starts running after him. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he like stops him. And then he has to throw him over his shoulder, but he is like twice his size. And so he finally like drags him then or like carries him to the couch and he throws him on there. He's like, you stay, you stay there. And so um, eventually everybody goes to sleep. But um, during, during that course of the night, he tried to FaceTime me six times. So I just turned off my phone. So I woke up, um, we all went to bed at like 4 a.m. I woke up at 7 a.m. I was so sleep deprived that I was like so energetic. You know how, you know how it be sometimes. And so um, I got up, I helped clean up a little and then I left because I didn't like want to like get in trouble or anything. And then um, my friend Steve is still like really, really hungover. So my friend Matthew like wakes him up at 8 a.m. He's like, dude, you gotta get out of here. You gotta get out of here. My parents are gonna be home in 10 minutes. And he's like, what? What? And he's still like hungover. He is sick. He is sick. And he's like, he forces him to get in his car. He's like, okay, but he like has to drive home. He lives 10 minutes away from Matthew's house and it took him an hour to get home. It took him a whole hour to get home. Once he got home, his parents weren't awake yet to let him in. So he had to climb the fence. He had to jump the fence, go through the doggy door, I guess he has like a really big dog because he fit through the doggy door. And then he finally got upstairs, rolled into bed and passed out. And then his dad um, called him like an hour later saying like, dude, you gotta get up, you gotta come into work. And he's still like hungover, he is sick. And so um, <laughs> he goes to work and he like was cleaning cars and there was like some rubbing alcohol involved. And so the smell like made him really sick. And so he was at work and he went upstairs and he just projectile vomited everywhere. 
so yeah that's gross i don't like vomit as a lot of you know but anyway so that was basically um that night and then i came home i came home around like 7 15 a.m and I, I told him that i was staying at my best friend's house which was a lie and so he was like hey and i was like hey and he's like so how was it i was like great it was great and then so he says to me he's like were you okay last night and i was like what? what what do you mean and then he says were you like on something last night i was like what and he's like were you like high were you high or were you drunk or something and i was like no i was like no and I mean, like, you know, I'm telling the truth. And I was thinking to myself, like, well, yeah, I had, like, 20 pounds of alcohol in my bag, and I didn't want you to check it. But, you know, I didn't say that. I didn't say that out loud. So I was just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was fine. I was, I was fine. But, um, yeah, he, to this day, he doesn't know that I tried to break into my own house and steal a bunch of illegal substances for my age and then sneak out um, and then drive past my curfew and then go to a place which was different than where I where I told him that I was actually gonna stay So he doesn't know any of that to this day and I don't think he would actually care at this point Um, but yeah, that was That was a really good start to my junior year. That is basically the end of the story Um, it got like six million views on tiktok. This is a way more detailed story It's actually the exact story that I told with the exact details that I told to nbc and um, sadly, I don't think that I will be on that show because of like the underage drinking. But it was really nice to get that opportunity. NBC, if you ever see this or if you see my other videos, then um, you should put me on a show. Okay guys, so I'm out of my hallway and I'm gonna show you like what happened, but this is my dad's bedroom right here. And if you go straight down these stairs, the, the window is kind of like pushed out a little more so when you're right here you can't see the window that I was trying to sneak in through so this is the window that I tried to sneak in through and um, before this happened we actually didn't have this like chair in the way so it was actually a lot easier to get in without a chair blocking everything okay so this is like the window closer and as you can see there's like this wall chunk right here um, so it comes out a little further and then if we move a little this way and then we look up, my dad's bedroom is right, is like right there. That's his like door, but it is pushed back a little. But he couldn't actually see me coming through the window cause it was like, um, cause the, the chunk of the wall was like obstructing his view. And for all of you who are wondering how loud the window is, I'm gonna open it a little and tell, show you how loud it is. So yeah, it's kind of hard to sneak in with that, so. So that is my window. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little segment. All right, well, that's my story um, of how my dad almost shot me. It's um, really crazy. I might not have told it as well as it like had actually happened, but it was really crazy. I peed myself, I stepped in dog poop, um, almost got shot, forgot about that part. So, um, I hope you enjoyed my story, guys. Um, sorry, it was super long, but it was, it was pretty interesting in the moment. I hope I told it well. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or sleep well, depending on when you're watching this. But thank you for watching my video and listening to my crazy story. And I hope to see you sometime next week. Stay safe, guys. Bye.